being me, I'm always thinking about like redoing things. Oh no no! Everything's fine. Everything's fine. It's stuck, you guys. Hi guys, welcome back to my home and welcome back to another episode of my DIY diaries. These videos are basically just a look at the different things I do around my home, upcycling, DIY. It's a constant journey. But before we get into what today's video is, I would love if you would give this channel a subscribe. We have this serious goal to reach two million before our 10 year anniversary, which is like seriously in a couple months. And yeah, you heard that right. 10 year anniversary, Danny. 10 years on YouTube doing this thing. So yeah, if you love this channel and love the content, then maybe consider giving us a subscribe. Okay, so what are we doing today? We're gonna start the video off with a good old fashioned Ikea upcycle. All right, let's talk about my TV media unit. This is probably one of Are you coming here? Hello. This is probably one of, if I have to think about it, one of the oldest pieces of furniture that I own. I got this TV unit right when I was out of college and I had like one of my first apartments and we needed something for under the TV. So we got this from Ikea. I'm so sure they do not sell it anymore. And it's just traveled with me from house to house to house because there really is nothing wrong with it. It's an awesome media unit and the drawers itself are literally huge and hold everything that I would need to store in this and it's just great. But me being me, I'm always thinking about like redoing things and I actually had my eye on this West Elm uh, media unit for the longest time and I had like a notification set on Kijiji in case anyone was ever getting rid of one and no one ever was. But it's kind of a good thing because I'm glad I didn't because I have plans today to give this a little bit of a facelift. I really liked doing that route too because I just feel like there's no need to get something new when what you have functions well and if there's like a way you can make it fit with what you want. So I don't know if you can tell but it's a very like blue white like a white white and my whole house is a very much like a creamy white so every time I look at this I'm just like reminded of the fact that it's not exactly on the same warm scale as the rest of my house and I always want to change that up a little bit and then one other thing I would love to change on this is that you see how the drawers fronts and the top are open um that's convenient because you can reach everything that you need but it's also like not the cutest because you can see all the cords and the game consoles so my plan today is to make two little door fronts to cover up these top little spaces and then give it a coat of paint that will make it a little bit more of a warmer color. Um, have I talked about this enough? Yes, you get it. Oh, one more thing. I have a very embarrassing like cord tangle mess behind the TV. My first goal before I even start to refinish this is to just clean up behind it. I have these little Velcro cord gatherers. Bundling ties, that's a much better way of saying that than cord gatherers. <laughs> and I also bought the world's most obnoxiously big power bar off of Amazon. Oh man, are you guys ready for this? <laughs> Oh no no! It's so bad! It's so bad! Oh no no! You don't care. Sometimes I do. All right, check it out. Okay, it probably still looks a little bit crazy, but this is organized chaos to me. It's so much better than how we started and everything has a spot. And I know it looks like a lot of cords, but I'm not that worried about them all being into one plug because most of them are things that would never run at the same time as each other. Like you would never have the Xbox on and the Switch, like it wouldn't happen. <laughs> it's a lot of things to get things to work, but uh, I'm, I'm happy with how it's working out. So the next thing to tackle is the drawer fronts for the open spaces. So I want to do the covers here out of like a wood frame with cane webbing in the middle. First step is using some thin wood like this to create little frames to go in the openings and then we can cover the gap in the middle with the cane. They are gonna be two separate drawer fronts that go over top of the opening and then the wood is gonna be what makes up the edge. The cane is going to go in the middle and then on the inside, we're gonna do two little like hinges here so it can open. And while I have this drawing up here on the iPad anyways, I might as well just do my measurements and then write it on here so that I don't forget. I am queen of writing measurements on paper and then not understanding my own measurements later because it's just a bunch of numbers. I need to like associate it with a photo for my brain to work. 
So after doing some thinking, I realized that the pieces of wood I had were a bit too wide, and if I had used them the way they were, then too much of the drawer front would be wood and not enough of the cane would show, which is not ideal. So I cut them all in half to make little mini pieces of wood. Are you impressed? I'm actually extremely impressed. Because it's working. That's way straighter than I thought it would ever be. I think you are more talented than I am. <laughs> Speak into the microphone when you say that. And then after that, I just cut all the pieces down to size so that I had my long pieces and my short pieces. Okay, it's the next day and I have all of the pieces cut. As you can see, they're now, well, the pieces used to be this wide and now they are this wide because I cut them in half. So I've got the length pieces and the width pieces. So now it's time to assemble them and make the rectangular drawer front pieces. So this is really easy. I'm just gonna do it with some wood glue and actually the coolest product ever that I picked up a while ago. These are clamps, but they're 90 degree angle clamps. So they hold anything like at a proper 90 degree angle so it can dry. And they were like $5. I just can't believe that I didn't own any of these. These are a game changer. The clamp literally just holds it at a perfect angle. It's wild. So I'm gonna add some wood glue in and then let it dry. And then while I have these here, I'm just gonna use a tiny little nail, like a finishing nail, and put a nail through the joint as well, just to keep everything super strong and secure. Beautiful. Okay, so I've also got these little trim pieces. They're like pretty thin. I didn't use them to actually build the shelf front because I didn't have long enough ones to go the whole distance. The reason I'm using these little tiny ones is because this is the drawer front and then I'm gonna put cane weaving here and then it's nice to have something on the back to sandwich the cane weaving in place so that it doesn't fray over time and it just really holds it in place. I guess my next step is gonna be taking this cane weaving that I have. I ordered this off Etsy because the normal one that we get from Amazon wasn't long enough. It came in like a square. So I had to get a custom one off of, off of Etsy, which I'll link the shop below. So I'm going to cut a piece that's big enough to fit in here and then I'll use my tiny little trim to kind of sandwich it in place. All right, she fits. Oh, it's going to look so cute. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I'm gonna use a combo of wood glue and again, some really tiny nails. Do I have nails that are short enough? That's a good question. They are too long. What do? Austin, what? do you have baby nails, like really tiny ones or not? Nah? Really, what? Really tiny like nails, like finishing nails. <laughs> okay, what I was able to find are these. They are like the babiest screws you've ever seen. They're so little. And while nails would be more ideal for this, this is the shortest thing that I have and it's gonna work. So that's what we're gonna do. Hello, it's the next day. It looks so good. My original plan was to put hinges on the bottom so that the drawer fronts could like sit open like this if they needed to. Due to like the way that there was like a lip here, um, the hinges I had wouldn't allow the drawer to open all the way. So we had to do it this way where they now kind of swing open like this. I know it's a little like tedious because they're such big drawers, but whatever. I feel like they're not actually gonna get opened that often. So my only ish now, we guess let me give you a close up, hold on. So these, these are the little hinges in here. They're just tiny little one inch ones from a hardware store and I screwed it into the door and then into the actual unit itself. But now they swing shut and they are beautiful. They fit together, open, they close, all that jazz and they line up and I'm so happy with how this is starting out, you guys. I got a little bit down on myself when I realized that I couldn't have them open the way I wanted to before and I was like, is this even gonna work? I spent all these hours on it and now I don't know, but I kind of know again, I found my groove. <laughs> One thing I need to add to these now is hardware. So, so what I do have still are these little knobs. They're the ones that are in my kitchen and they're so sleek and simple and minimal and they literally came off Amazon and were very affordable, but they feel like weighty and high quality. So I will be sure to link them below because I love them. So what I think I actually want to try and do is have them be inset a little bit onto the cane. So what I think I'll do is with the extra trim, cut a little tiny jut out that can go here and I guess glue it on and then screw the knob through and I think that will hold up. Because the hole in the cane is already there, I should just pick one of the holes to make the hole for the knob to go in, even though it's not exactly the center. 
Okay, we are ready to paint and I like to use chalk paint because it's just really, it sticks to furniture really well. But you have to get it in like a certain set of colors or at least for the bare kind you do. And I feel like I don't wanna do white because I'd love to do something that matches the cane maybe a little bit better. And the next best thing is this, but I'm worried this is gonna look yellow. I think I'm just gonna go for it. We'll do the pale moon and I really just hope it's not yellow looking. All right, so I let the chalk paint fully dry and then the last step is to go over it with a finishing wax. This just seals the paint and makes it really durable and all you do is buff it in on top of the paint with a cloth. All right, the TV media unit is finished and as you can tell, it came out to be just like a straight up true cream color. I don't know why I thought it'd be a little darker and a little more yellow, but it's, it's just a very creamy cream. <laughs> but I do love how it turned out. I think it complements the color of the cane really nicely, so all I need to do is put it back together and restyle it and show you the finished product. Okay, next up we're gonna give a little makeover to this downstairs hallway. As you can already see, it's kind of like an interesting color. This has always been a space that's felt a little like unattended to, a little sad, kind of unfinished feeling, needs some love, and today is the perfect opportunity to do it. And I have been dying to find a place in my house to put wallpaper on. I love the concept of wallpaper and how cool you can get with awesome designs, but there hasn't been a wall that's been like, this is the place, because wallpaper can be a lot. And like, I want it to be a lot. I don't want like something simple. I want a really cool print, but I needed to find the right place that like wasn't too much. And because you can see the ceiling of the stairs through this glass, Door. It's a cool opportunity to do something that's maybe a little bold on the ceiling, but because it's such a small area and kind of behind a door, I think we can get away with something cray cray, but it'll be like a little toned down since it's only a small area, not like, wha bam, the entire bedroom is wallpaper. You know what I mean? So let me show you what we're working with and get started. Okay, so welcome to the staircase. I did these test paints strips so long ago back when I was painting the whole house I wanted to see how the white looked in like every different area so I think I used the staircase as a testing ground so the plan is to paint this wall and this wall and the wall down there in just the same white that I used for the house I'm gonna leave the staircase alone it's carpeted but it's the same carpet that's in a whole basement and today is not that day <laughs> so the ceiling here this little like strip area that's where I want to put some funky wallpaper and then down here there is space for a light to go and I actually ordered one which I'll show you guys in a second But I'm gonna put a light up here, which will brighten up the stairwell case as well This is the light I'm gonna be using It's a simple like frosted globe top one with a brass bottom pretty simple But it matches the one that's in my upstairs bathroom So if you want it, it's from Wayfair and I will link it below for you Okay, I want to share a super useful tip slash hack with you guys. If you're ever installing a light or really anything where you kind of have to hold it and also hold the screwdriver and the screw at the same time and you don't have three hands. And a lot of the times the screws aren't like magnetic to the screwdriver, which we wish they were, that make our life so much easier. But for in this case, I have to hold the light and then get the screw into the light to lock it to the ceiling in like a very precarious angle that's nearly impossible to do without dropping the screw every time. So what I do is I use a little piece of tape. It can be mass tape I have painters tape and that'll work fine and I literally tape the screw to the tip of the screwdriver okay see how it's like sitting on there but if I tried to get it into the screw hole it would fall off so I'm just gonna tape just the head of the screw to the screwdriver okay see how like it's now taped to the screwdriver and the thread part is sticking out. This now makes it easy to just hold the light and screw it in to get it started. And once it's threaded and like kind of in place, then I can pull it off. The tape should come off easy because it's not that strong of a tape and then I can screw the rest in normally. But this is a good hack if you don't have three hands to hold something and hold the screw and hold the screwdriver. All right. The light is up. It looks a lot cuter in real life than it does on camera, but I think that's just because the rest of its surrounding area is so lackluster. So now we paint. 
Okay, and then instead of just doing the ceiling with that same white paint, I'm actually gonna be using this. This is primer, specifically made for wallpaper. Um, and since I know I wanna do wallpaper, I feel like this could only help. I've never used this before and I have no idea if it really helps, but I, I just don't wanna mess it up, so I feel like now, let's improve my chances a little bit and do this as a primer so we're ready when we do the wallpaper. Okay, the first website we're gonna go to, I actually discovered through Helen Anderson. She is like the wallpaper queen and she did a home tour however long ago and said that some of her paper was from this website called Wallpaper from the 70s. And I remember briefly looking at it a while ago, not needing any wallpaper at the time, but now I, I wanna do that. So I'm gonna go here and see what's up first. Wallpaper patterns. Novelty floral, baroque, glamorous. Oh, I love the 70s. Yep, because I do. And because they have a category called that, sign me up. Oh my gosh, these are so 70s. I have to like balance the line between like, this wallpaper is wild and I love it, but it doesn't match anything else in my house. <laughs> I wanna find something that's like, you know, right on the line of being really cool and eccentric and super different, but also like doesn't look like it doesn't belong in my house. Oh, this is fun. I like this one. I'm just gonna start opening tabs and then come back to them later. I feel like someone I knew, like my grandparents maybe had this wallpaper in their laundry room at one point. <laughs> it looks very familiar. This is fun too, and this is fun too. I don't know if I want gray though. Ah, I like them all. That is wild. <laughs> You've reached the end. So sad. Well, okay, they had other categories too. Like, are we over the palm print or not? It was a trend recently, but also it was based off something so classic, like the Beverly Hills Hotel. So like, can it really ever go out of style? This is kind of fun. I don't know if it's too boring. I feel like I have to go with something that feels like this is a too much print because every time I make a design choice that feels like a little bit too extra, I love it. And if I play it safe, I get bored. One other place I wanna check is my Etsy account because I know in the past, I was on like a wallpaper fling and never actually ordered anything, but I think I saved a bunch that I liked. So let's see what old me thought was good wallpaper. This one was fun, cause it's like kind of a retro print, but in a neutral color, which I feel like I need to do for it to match my house. Oh, I like this, this is cool. It gives me like sand zen garden vibes. You know what I'm gonna do? I cannot decide. And you know what is really gonna help me is sort of like seeing the pattern in the space. So I'm gonna go take a photo of the hallway and then in Photoshop, put these sample patterns on top of the wall and go from there. So I brought the picture of my hallway into Photoshop and I actually was so extra that I Photoshopped the door to see what it would look like with the door closed because I don't know, maybe the grid on the door might make a pattern feel like too much. So we've got this one, which I really like. This one I really do like. I think the bluey gray is actually pretty, like a fresh color that feels nice for the space, but I think in the long run, I'm not gonna like that cool tone gray. So goodbye. This one I think is too simple. It's gotta go. Okay, and then this one I found at the last minute when I was like going through Etsy, and this one's really cool. It's hard to tell because the picture of it was not that HD compared to the rest of them, like how accurate this color is gonna be. Okay, I think it's between this one or this one. This one is so cool. I said it, I was like, I have to go with the one that feels like a bit much and is a little bit scary because I'm gonna love it. I really like this one. Okay, it might be this one. I'll, I'll inform you guys on the flip side. <laughs> All right, you guys, I did it. And I have to share with you what I just found out. I was reading the description on this product and check this out. All our wallpapers in our collection are truly authentic from the 1920s to the early 1980s, not a modern reproduction. They come from old stock. Ah, how insane is that? So this one says it's from the late 60s to early 70s is when this wallpaper is actually from. And that is the most insane thing I've ever heard, which makes me love this so much more. It says it's not gonna get here for like maybe two weeks, but I'm so excited. I'm gonna link the shop below because I don't know if this exact product will still be available because it is like, you know, it's not new. So once it's gone, it's gone. But it sounds like everything in their shop is antique, which is super, super cool. So yeah, I'm gonna link that below and I will see you later when this arrives at my door. Today is an exciting day, everybody, because the wallpaper finally came and it's so beautiful in real life. It is more texture than I could tell online, which is okay. I'm hoping that doesn't make it more difficult to apply. And we see it's like a little bit 
like 3D. -y. So um, a little backstory on wallpaper if you don't know. Aside from the kind of more new age wallpaper that is vinyl, peel and stick, which essentially are giant stickers, traditional wallpaper comes in pre-pasted and not pre-pasted. Pre-pasted has a layer of dried glue on the back which when you get it wet it becomes wet glue and it's already done and you just stick it to the wall. Non pre-pasted is basically just paper, dry paper, and you need to apply glue yourself to the back, which is a little bit more of a messy um, deal, but it's okay, we're gonna make it work. I will say I'm a little, a little cautious because I'm not the most experienced on applying wallpaper. I know it can be difficult, and especially this, because it's actually antique, I can't get any more of it. The listing's gone because I bought it, so if I mess it up, I'm not even gonna put that in the universe because I'm not going to, so let's get to putting this up. Okay, before we get out the glue and all of that, the first step is gonna be rolling this out and cutting out the pieces I need and making sure they're gonna line up to each other properly. I'm gonna use some painter's tape and just really loosely tape this into place to get the two pieces rough that um, I'm gonna use. Oh my God, you guys, this is so beautiful. I love this so much. If only it was that easy. Okay, I've got them both temporarily stuck up there with some tape. Um, the spacing's not 100%, obviously it needs to get moved this way to fill that gap, and then they're gonna need to get separated like this way, and I'll have to trim some off the side once it's actually up there. But I just wanted to do this to make sure that the dots actually line up, and as you can see on the two panels, like every line, the dots will line up perfectly, and that's what matters. So I've got the two pieces long enough, and they're gonna match, so now we can get to gluing. Okay, I set up our DIY table that's usually just outside in here, so I had a good big surface to work on. And this is the glue. It's kind of gross and like clear jelly looking. Okay, once you have the whole tabletop covered in the glue paste, you have to fold it so that the paper can just chill for a sec, absorb all the glue, get all its wrinkles out, and just kind of like mellow, you know? Okay, I let it sit been about five, seven minutes, and I think it's good to go up on the ceiling. This is where the real work comes in. All these steps before, we were just playing games. Now we're doing real sports. I don't know, does that analogy make sense? Okay, I don't know. I can sit here and be nervous all day if I want, but we just gotta do it. It's the only way. Here we go. Oh, what I did too, in advance, I drew a pencil line down the center because my pieces are too wide, so I want them to be centered in the middle as opposed to like lined on the outside and cut it in the middle. So yeah, I'm gonna line my piece up to that and then whatever excess is on that side, we'll just cut it off after, so wish me luck. Dude, I don't know how this is not all gonna just fall and be sticky. Oh, I already got the sticky hands. I'm just gonna tape it because I like and you really need a second set of hands to hold this. I don't know if this is gonna be strong enough at all. Ah, it's just a stop corner. That's the worst. It's just a stop corner. I don't want to be too optimistic yet, but I kind of feel like it's working. I hope. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> I need more hands. This is where I have to unfold the second half, so <laughs> I really want to adjust the camera too for you guys, but I can't let go of this or it will all fall down. <laughs> guys, if I pull this off by myself, you can do anything, okay? Anything. Okay, it's like stuck. I just need to smooth it out more. <laughs> it's stuck, you guys. I could cry. Okay, before the glue like properly fully dries, I just need to go in with a little X-Acto knife and trim off all the excess so then I can make sure that edge is pushed down fully and then it can dry and I can take a long arm break before doing it all again. It's up and all trimmed and it looks so good. Oh my gosh, you guys. It's not like 100% flawless. There's some spaces like here you can see like the cutting wasn't that even. It was really hard to cut, I'll be honest. I don't know if I was doing something wrong, but I think in the future I can always go grab a paint that's like this beige and just fill in any little gaps where it kind of ripped like here you can see it's not cut the best, but you know what? If you stand far back, you would not notice at all. And I think it's so beautiful. So now I'm just gonna repeat that whole process again on this side. <sighs> okay, you guys, the wallpaper is up. It looks so beautiful. I feel like it's that last little something that this room was needing to pull it all together to give it that like fun, 
vibe that's these beautiful brownie warm tones and vintage and can we just talk about how actually cool it is that I have something in my house that is 50 years old wow 70s did not feel like it was 50 years ago, but it was. That's just amazing. I'm so happy with how it turned out. If you like this series, I've done an episode before where I did other DIYs around my house and they are for sure gonna happen again. So make sure you subscribe to this channel because I don't want you to miss them. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what you thought about these DIYs and I can't wait to see you around. So subscribe and I'll see you next time.